form as well at our website. I'm Amy Goodman. The presidential field narrowed by two on Wednesday when Republican Rudolph Giuliani and Democrat John Edwards dropped out of the race a day after they both placed third in the Florida primaries. Giuliani made his announcement in California just hours before the Republican debate. The former New York mayor threw his support behind Senator John McCain. Meanwhile, John Edwards made his farewell address in New Orleans, where he launched his campaign 13 months ago. Edwards did not endorse any of the Democratic candidates. Now, I've spoken to both Senator Clinton and Senator Obama. They have both pledged to me, and more importantly, through me, to America, that they will make ending poverty central to their campaign for the presidency. <laughs> And more importantly, they have pledged to me that as President of the United States, they will making, make ending poverty and economic inequality central to their presidency. This is the cause of my life, and I now have their commitment to engage in this cause. But I want to say this, I want to say this because it's important. With all of the injustice that we've seen, I can say this, America's hour of transformation is upon us. It may be hard to believe when we have bullets flying in Baghdad. It may be hard to believe when it costs $58 to fill your car up with gas. It may be hard to believe when your school doesn't have the right books for your kids. It's hard to speak out for change when you feel like your voice is not being heard. But I do hear it. We hear it. This Democratic Party hears you. We hear you once again. And we will lift you up with our dream of what's possible. One America. One America that works for everybody. John Edwards speaking in New Orleans Wednesday. We're now joined on the phone by David Bonnier. He served as the national campaign manager for John Edwards. Uh, Bonnier is a former U.S. congressman who represented the 12th district in Michigan from 1976 to 2002. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Congressman Bonnier. Good morning. How are you? It, it's good to have you with us. What made John Edwards decide to drop out yesterday? Well, I think he. He, he looked at what, what was out there in terms of the path to the nomination, and he didn't see uh, the path leading to uh, John Edwards. And he wanted to make sure that he got an assurance, as you just heard from the clip that you played, uh, from the other candidates that they would continue to raise and highlight these issues that were of most concern to him and concern to people whose voices had not been heard and whose voice that he was uh, amplifying, the voice of, of those that he was amplifying during the campaign on the issues of poverty, universal health care, and, uh, and, and economic, racial, social justice equality. Was it South Carolina that did it? His home state where he was born won it in 2004 with something like 45 percent of the vote, but then coming in third now? Well, South Carolina obviously was not helpful in terms of uh, where we ended up, we, as you pointed out, we won it uh, four years ago. Uh, we were running against two historic candidates, people that uh, were representing uh, uh, African American community and the uh, uh, well, women, 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 women's vote in this country that were just historic in their in their in their breadth and scope, and uh, and had huge resources, a hundred million dollars each, and I think. All of that combined drowned out, to a large extent, uh, a lot of the message that John was trying to get across. Uh, there were a number of reports that you may have seen from nonprofit organizations and other media organizations that look at the media in terms of its balance, fairness, and those kinds of things. And, and they showed quite clearly that Obama and Clinton were getting six, seven times more press and coverage than John Edwards' message was getting. John Edwards also had a message that took on some of the corporations in this country, uh, particularly the uh, oil industry, the um, health, health insurance industry, and the pharmaceutical industry, and others. Uh, and he was a threat to uh, a, a lot of corporate America. So both of that, I think, helped um, keep his message to a level in which, unfortunately, didn't reach enough people. Mm. 
What about uh, the union support? Uh, David Bond, you're, you're known as, a, a, to say the least, a pro-labor congressman when you were there, a labor activist. Um, it looked like early on John Edwards was going to get a lot of union support. And then in Nevada, the culinary workers turn around and they endorse Obama. What happened there? Culinary workers, the culinary workers part of uh, Unite Here. Well, it's, it's it's rather complicated, but you, I think you've kind of set the table here by saying Unite Here. Unite Here is a union that was formed and put together uh, uh, several years ago. Uh, it, parts of it were Unite, which is the textile, which were primarily from the textile end of the, the labor movement, and then here, hotel and restaurant employees uh, were just what the name describes, and they came together and they and they. Formed the, uh, they emerged from a very powerful union, and uh, the textile folks were very supportive of John in 2004. And the HERE folks said basically that they loved John. John was much involved in their campaign for um, uh, Hotel Rising campaign, which they were trying to get decent wages for housekeepers, people who worked in hotels across the country. John. Edwards traveled with Danny Glover across the country trying to highlight this issue. Uh, he's been very active in 250 separate union organizing drives around the country, walking picket lines, uh, hunger strikes, uh, you name it. He was down at the University of Miami. He was all over the country doing efforts to help workers organize. Uh, one of the great untold stories of this campaign that we tried to get out, but uh, you know, a lot of the corporate folks weren't interested in listening to it and the media folks. But, but to get to your point and your question, uh, the answer was that the uh, HERE, the culinary workers who belong to Unite Here, uh, decided they were going to wait until after Iowa to see what happened. And when Obama won Iowa, uh, that's when they decided to endorse. Uh, I think they would have endorsed John uh, if we would have won Iowa, but we, we, we beat Hillary Clinton, but we didn't beat Barack Obama, and that's when they decided to go with Obama. Looking at the New York Times coverage of your candidate, of John Edwards, dropping out, and they say he pitched himself as a populist, but it was hard to overcome what became known as the three H's, his haircuts, $400, his house, 28,000 square feet in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and the hedge fund where he worked after his 2004 loss, which invested in companies that foreclosed on mortgages of Hurricane Katrina victims in New Orleans, the city Mr. Edwards was trying to make the emblem of his anti-poverty work. Your comment, David Bonnier. Well, uh, in terms of the hedge fund in the, in the New Orleans piece, let me just say that uh, there's nobody that's fought harder for working people and for people in poverty uh, than John Edwards. And yes, he, he, he worked for this company. And, you know, hedge funds do good things. They don't necessarily do bad things all the time. And they, they, they've been very helpful in, in many respects in this country. And he divested himself of, of all of his uh, uh, holdings in uh, the. Uh, uh, predatory lending uh, piece that uh, people uh, pointed to. In fact, not only did he do that, divest himself of those stocks, he actually set up in New Orleans a fund with some folks, um, put his own money in uh, to help uh, people whose homes have, who were, were taken from their homes. So he, you know, he, he went even beyond just the divesting of his, of his stock portfolio. So where do you go from here? Where does the staff, you have people like Chris Chafe, who came out of Unite Here, top um, figure within John Edwards' campaign, Unite Here, of course, endorsing Obama, and yet John Edwards did not endorse a presidential candidate yesterday. Uh, well, I, I think John is, is, is concerned primarily about, about the issues that he's fought for, and he wants to listen and hear and see how the uh, two remaining candidates uh, stand up and fight for those issues. And uh, we'll see what they do and how prominent they, for instance, tonight, uh, focus in on the issues that he cares about. And so uh, I don't know what his future's, future is with respect to endorsements, but my sense is it probably is, is not going to happen. If it does happen, it won't happen right away, and if it happens at all. And so we're listening, we're waiting. Uh, we'll be continuing to pressure our, our, our two candidates uh, in the party to speak out forcefully with passion and uh, on these issues to make them central parts of their campaigns. And 
and we'll, we'll see what happens from here. Now, we, we've got a lot of people, wonderful people that worked on this campaign. As you know, in, in these campaigns, you have a lot of young people, and we had hundreds of them from around the country uh, on paid staff, and then, you know, thousands more that volunteered. And, you know, we're, we're in a situation right now that we're trying to do a transition for all of them, making sure that they land on their feet and uh, help them with uh, job searches and, and school searches and those kinds of things. So these things just don't end. Well, I mean, I guess they 